Coming up, let's talk about sex, baby. Or not. The White House in the middle of a storm named Stormy this week. We'll have the latest on the president and the porn star. Plus, Michael Jackson said it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, but even he might have raised an eyebrow at Rachel Dolezal, the former NAACP leader, is back in a new Netflix documentary, and even her own son is not interested in binging any of that. And later, car shows with nothing but cars. Lame. Coming up, we could have reached a line in the sand in the Me Too movement. Like it or not, starts right now. Hey, look, we're back. Welcome into Like It or Not with Rick McHenry, hey Guy Lambert. Can I'm you Graham say uh, I like uh, the sex thing again? I don't. I do feel you like I really need want me right to do that again? Just don't. Just don't add the. Let's talk about you and me. And we're good. <laughs> All right. You got it. I will never be able to replicate that. We are going down a weird wormhole this week. Porn yeah. stars and car shows both ruined I love for it. everybody. So, Guy's dreams just shattered. Yeah, right there. A lot of them. Let's get to what's trending this week. And first up, the president and the porn star. Stormy Daniels is still not allowed to discuss whether she had sex with President Trump over a decade ago. She could, I suppose, say they were doing literally anything else because why would someone pay you $130,000 not to discuss the activity you'd do with a porn star that didn't involve sex? For now, a judge is restraining Stormy Daniels from disclosing that they did do it, even though her lawyer disclosed that they did. The courts are trying to figure out if an unsigned portion of a non-disclosure agreement by someone not named David Dennison, allows her to say or, uh-oh, show what that thing we can't talk about might look like. Like it or not, sex, mm. Brit. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm going to go with I, I not in a different direction, not liking this. Look, we were discussing this in, in break in our free time that we elected a man knowing that he wasn't this perfect politician. He's been married, what, three times already. This happened before he was president. If it's happening in the Oval Office, hello, Bill Clinton, and lying under oath, then yes, that's a serious uh, consideration that's something that should be condemned but legitimate media sources are going out of their minds trying to get Trump on this it was all on CNN all day meanwhile North Korea is coming out saying they will meet with the president and we're fixated on a porn star no we're talking she about wants both more of them. money it's the news it's we're disgusting. talking about both of them hmm. well yeah of course she wants more money but yeah. in the case of Bill Clinton we talked about Paula Jones and all the people who were before he was into the White House so the level of hypocrisy that is that is put out there by this particular administration they're redefining the word can I jump in on this? Yeah. Yeah, please. Oh, I've been waiting for this all week. <laughs> uh, no, this is really a big deal. This, uh, forget uh, Russian collusion and everything else. Uh, this is what I think is what's really going to get the president to say possibly bye-bye. The reason being is that this is all about the campaign finance funds. Correct. It has that is nothing it, yeah. to do, really. Uh, I can really care less as to whether or not what he did with another woman. That's something that he has to answer to his wife, <laughs> not me, and, or, nor you. But with regard to the campaign finance, I think that we're probably going to find out very soon soon that money's well, actually spent on keeping her quiet, which is illegal. That's why this is really a big deal. Well, and there was a report that his lawyer, Michael Cohen, kind of orchestrated all of this stuff through possibly a Trump organization email, to your mm -hmm. point. So for, for an administration that went on a stand so Don't aggressively emails. about emails, right. that's a faux pas. And I, I would agree on that point right there. But I do not care what this man did before his personal in his personal life before becoming president. And I think we're so desensitized now in 2018, for better or for worse, than we were in 96 and in the 90s that I, I don't know if the, most of the American viewers really care. We're talking about the president of the United States. Yeah, I would prefer him not to. And there is no way, moral authority course. there. And they got to change the subject, with the, which they did with the Oscars. Did you watch the Oscars? Me too. This year, though, more of you did not raise your hand, like 20% less of you. Why didn't you watch the Oscars? Me too. It was the lowest rated award ceremony ever, albeit was still one of the largest audiences that TV is going to have this year. President Trump gets all stormy about the ratings, especially when they play to his narrative that we the people only like him. So like it or not, conservative messaging is the reason people started 
tuning out the Oscars this wow, year? Wow, that's a very good question. You, you know, when, when you talk about the Oscars, you think about, for me, the first thing I think about is what Jimmy Kimball said about the president, and that being, uh, I think it, he liked the shape of water, about a monster having sex with a woman. <laughs> that, but I'm bummed. Uh, but with regard to how many folks watched it, I absolutely enjoyed it. I mean, I don't understand how politics get involved in all of this. We watch it because we want to see the stars win or lose. But if you keep in mind, five daily shows now, six nightly shows in which all we do is talk about stars, we could probably be burned out of stars, if you will. Uh, yeah, I would I would counter that, though, to watching it to see the stars win or lose. Half those people you never heard of in your <laughs> lifetime. You know, they're doing best sound on a documentary in Japan. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know who these people are. It's four hours. It's boring. And yes, as a conservative, I don't want to listen to Jimmy Kimmel preach to me. It's just, it's, I, I, I do think, think that was part of it. It was not as politicized as I thought it was going to be. There were a few shots in there that typically happens. Mike Pence. I, I would say this. Um, in terms of ratings, and this goes for the NFL as well, where people say things are, are dying off. People didn't stop liking movies or liking football. They just don't watch it in the same way. So ratings are down for everything. Show me the thing that was up against the Oscars that was up 20%, and then I'll tell you they tuned it out. No, people are watching less television entirely. This affects everything, and Netflix. therefore ratings go down. Right. All right, you're beefing. What is it? President Trump gets accused of a lot, and he gets accused about lying every day, but he also has delivered on some campaign promises and surprised a lot of critics, maybe some gentlemen right here in the process. The most recent example is the diplomatic breakthrough with North Korea. The president has agreed to meet with, as he termed him, little rocket man, <laughs> Kim Jong-un, to talk about ending the country's nuclear weapons program. Let's not hold our breath, but in response, Okay, I tweeted this out last night. Trump will never win the presidential election. That was a quote we heard. Oh, by the way, he won with 304 electoral votes. Bram's not happy. Trump is going to start a nuclear war. Remember those? Yeah. About the tweets? Now they're going to meet and discuss denuclearization. And, uh, oh, tax reform is Armageddon, my fa favorite from Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, how's that going? New jobs announced every month. So I think he's delivering, and I don't think that... There's some trust in the media because fake news is so easy to believe when those are the messages going out. Um, this happens with every president <laughs> and whichever the other side determines right. the same thing. President Obama's apparently his birth certificate didn't exist for four <laughs> years while he was in office. And we would say, OK, here he is delivering on this. And you're going, no, it's his birth certificate. And I did like your use of quotes without saying who actually said that. Yeah. You could because turn on that's CNN and MSNBC at any okay. point. You know what's really things. funny about all of this? We are now more than one year in into his administration. And you just made mention of three Things. What is that? One thing, good thing every, what, four or five weeks now, if we add that up? Probably even more than that. Uh, kudos going out to you, Britt. You got this one. I'll bow down. But Because if it's Obama, we'd be hearing about it for eight year? years. And if it was Obama, we'd be hearing about his birth certificate <laughs> and his religion. I feel like that gets overhyped. That wasn't Does it? <laughs> the president was at the forefront of it. Look at media trying to track down Stormy Daniels every move. Yeah, well. Here Your we are. I agree with Trump you. Detente. Can we all have facts? I would love that. If both sides would come to terms with that, that'd be lovely. Meantime, combine controversy. Coming up next year, should a football team ask a potential draftee if he is gay? Like it or not, is back after this. You've been to the Combine, right, many yeah, times? Much. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Uh, last week, hundreds of young, strapping men put on short, tight clothes and ran and sweat and got measured, and it's not like that. Unless you're into that. The NFL Combine is supposed to be a football meat market, not the other kind of meat market. But that did not stop one undisclosed team from asking LSU running back Derek, Darius Geis if he likes men and if his mom was someone who might sell her body. And if you think this is extremely unusual in a job interview, then you're right. Except at the Combine, where stories of bizarre lines of sexual questioning have been habitual for years. Like it or not, does a player's sexuality matter to be part of the NFL? Well, of course it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter with anything that you do. I mean, I'm really torn about this because initially when I first heard this story, the first thing I thought about was how dare they say something like that to a player? How I would be outraged.
outraged if an, a potential employer said that to me. But then I started thinking about it. These players are put under intense pressure. They're paid a king's ransom. And I would, as an owner, I would want to know how that player might react in a tight situation where, well, here is under pressure. <laughs> Interesting use of tight situation. <laughs> yes. So, so I, I, I get it. it. Bottom line is that the, both the potential players and the owners have to agree to say, hey, we're going to be in a position where we can ask you things to put you, make you uncomfortable to see how you're going to respond. I will say this, covering it and talking to other coaches in the league, they, they ask about girlfriends too. I mean, they ask right. a lot of inappropriate questions. A lot. The whole lines of the spectrum. I think it's funny, though, that you say that because this is the same league that's just ignoring concussion and CTE issues. And mm. if, I mean, if there's more serious pressing things to be concerned about, I think it's that. We get outraged every year. They ask these questions every year. And it is to see how these players will perform under pressure. And look, it's not PC. That will be an issue in a locker room with 53 guys. I will, um, it has I will tell you partially, though, they're not ready for an open league gay player, and that's why that question is. Exactly. Well. They're it's, not. That, we know that's, the reality that's being That's unfortunately those rooms. the yeah. truth of it, unfortunately. Coming up here, Rachel Dolezal is back with a new Netflix documentary, and even her son does not like it. We've got more on the backlash next. New tip for those calling Howard County 911, if there is a fire at your house and you say you need a fireman, you will have offended someone. The county council there passed a bill that officially changed the name of firemen to firefighters. The Baltimore Sun story features a quote saying this will help young girls envision the dream of being a firewoman. Meantime, those hot Hollywood stars took a back seat to the coders from the HBO hit Silicon Valley who did a mundane interview about their show for the magazine. But for some reason, the cover featuring them became a discussion of whether masculinity is some kind of lost art. Like it or not, empowered female fighter fighters and techies becoming the next hotties. <laughs> I, I saw that magazine cover. I don't care what the joke is. I was joking, but I'm serious telling you this. I'm a fan of the alphas. That is why dating is so hard. These they, did an interview, wow. they did an interview about a hit show. Yeah. This is not a referendum on men. But then why use the headline like they did and all of these men like reaching into each other's pockets? If you don't think that's like a little odd? That obviously was for a fact. The beta male thing is a joke. Yeah. Okay. It's about the beta version of but the show I'm they're the doing. It's coder guys, talk. And I can tell you it's a reality. So out you're in the not world. dating. That's the reality of the world. Not in my world. Where do you go where that happens? Yeah, when so, it comes to Brit, no uh, beta male. So me and my no friends are not, all, right? Me and my friends street. we're not walking around with each other's hands in each other's yeah, pockets. Never that. It's not my real world. Well, I look, I'm just saying I'm a fan of the alpha. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Let's talk about the fireman and uh, firefighter. Uh, I think that's a good thing, actually. Why not? Uh, so many times we find that women in certain environments, well, they're persecuted, if you will. They're uh, chastised. And, well, this is a great opportunity for them to feel equal, in my opinion. And as you stated, little girls now could say, you know what, I too want to be a firefighter versus a fireman. High Why, five did on. they ever say they couldn't be one? But, but you know what, the actual <laughs> term fireman, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it just, it lends to thinking that you possibly couldn't be just that because of the actual term. I'm pretty sure any woman who's willing to go into a burning home with exhaust and Oof. fumes and put on all of the equipment, isn't that, it's like, Please go do it. 50 pounds. I don't think the word fireman is going it shouldn't to stop sway you. them. Correct. Oh, if if it right. makes if it makes people feel better, yeah. fine. But it just shows how soft we are getting. Like I am the woman on this set. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if it's an actor or an actress, a fireman, a firefighter. I'm going to pursue my dreams. Little girls watching this are going to pursue their dreams. Stop being so soft. Yeah, stop being so soft. I'm with you on that. Stop being so soft. <laughs> hey, listen, we now know there is a statute of limitations for a man to grab another man in the genitals. Actor Terry Crews revealed this happened to him at a party last year at the hands of a powerful agent. Crews' wife saw this happen. William Moore's agent Adam Vennett is the accused. He would describe the incident later as horseplay and nothing sexual. Crews said the experience gave him some form of PTSD. The judge essentially said, move on. So like it or not, 
this is also sexual assault. Yeah, very much so. Uh, let me lead on this one. This, quite honestly, pisses me off, and I'll tell you why. This is why so many women have a problem with coming forward when they've been sexually assaulted in some way, form, or fashion. Uh, he is the victim here. He came forward. He did everything right. He's been persecuted, uh, ridiculed, you name it. And what does he get for it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It, the, so what is it? The statute of limitations has now been surpassed. Not only that, but because the physical hand didn't touch the portion of his body. It was through skin the clothes. To skin. Correct. I mean, come on. You know, if, if that happened to me, now I'm thinking, wow, would I want to come forward? Would I want to tell the world about this? Because at the end of the day, I've just been embarrassed. I, I, yeah, I don't like the the term horseplay or joking. It's what Al Franken used to describe his situation when the photographs emerged of him, yeah. you know, it's what Jerry Sandusky described yeah, it's, he it's was doing very, with football players. It's a very dangerous route yeah. to go. Um, and it's just, it's not funny. It's not funny to ever grab somebody. I think you could, especially for women, you could pull 10 women in this newsroom. At least eight of them probably have been in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. And, and Terry showed that men now, men have too. And to diminish that, I don't like it at all. And I'm with you. It's, it's, it's gross. So Terry Crews, not. We don't like it. Yeah. Hey, remember the white woman who fooled a lot of African Americans, including myself, into believing she was actually African American? So much so, she became the president of the NAACP in Spokane. Well, like it or not, she's back. Rachel Dolezal plans to tell her story as a trans black person in the Netflix documentary, The Rachel Divide. It's called rebuilding. This is gonna Some affect people more read. than just your life. Some people read and so, yeah, what happened affected more than just my life. If somebody has hope, don't take that away from them because maybe I'm that's not. all they have. Trust me, it is going to bite me in the ass. All right, that's Rachel's son, Franklin, who's giving the whole thing two black and white thumbs down. So the question remains, is she beating a dead horse or does she have a valid reason to tell her story? I can give you a valid reason. Money. Hmm. Um, I, I tried looking up how much she's making for this. It's nowhere to be found. I'm sure it's a hefty sum. What the hell is a black trans person. I'm sorry. I'm to like, figure that out too. I'm with you on that one, Britt. Uh, yeah, it, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. Bram, uh, curiosity, what's your take on all of this before I weigh in? I think this really fits a Christopher Guest mockumentary model, mm. like Spinal Tap of the NAACP, that this is more of a ruse and a joke yeah. than it is anything else, and I don't take it seriously whatsoever. I'm with you. Yeah. I don't know what excuse me, if this offends a trans black person, yeah, hey. what that would possibly yeah. mean. Yeah. But you know what this all boils down to, and it's not race. What this boils down to is her son is saying, Mom, this really bothers me. Mm -hmm. Isn't a mom supposed please to stop be? Yeah, please stop talking about talking this. About it. My daughter asked me to stop humming a tune when I took her into elementary school the other day. I can imagine her son wants nothing to do with trying to explain this to anybody else. When you're usually going against your family and friends, that's when you're taking yes. the wrong move. In the, in the yeah. public eye, you're going to get trolls, you're going to get negative yeah. comments, but when you go against your own family, your son, that's when you're taking the wrong move. Yeah, Bye, Felicia. take his advice. <laughs> Bye. Take his advice. Hey, if you're going to a car show, that typically means checking out the new models and occasionally the cars, <laughs> but not anymore. Coming up next, the Me Too movement is affecting the auto industry. We'll be right back. You really want to make America great again? Stop telling me it's not appropriate to look at beautiful women who are wearing tight-fitting clothing. Me Too has hit the auto shows where a number of major car makers are removing the models now, saying their inclusion in showing off new vehicles are not in line with current branding. Racing Circuit Formula One recently pulled what they called their grid girls for the exact same reason. So like it or not, us middle-aged men are getting a raw deal here. Mm. I don't like it. They just took away so much money from Instagram models. <laughs> They're all crying on the internet. Look, if a woman wants to objectify herself, 
and she's getting a good salary for it, let her do it. It's her choice. She's the one owning up to but it. But no one's making her and, go and stand it's, there it's next to the car. Between five hundred to a thousand dollars, I would guess, for the weekend. That's a good chunk of change. You don't have to work. I'm all table. for that until I start thinking about if that woman happened to be my sister. Then I'm like, you know what? No, I don't want her doing. Maybe it. your sister shouldn't do it. No one's making her. How about yeah, that? Yeah, but still at the same time, I don't know. This is the year of Me Too. We're supposed to, you know, we have to respect women as they should be. And what we're doing, once again, we're this is marketing. Sex sells, and I'm buying, okay? Beautiful women attached to certain brands is something that a lot of us are attracted to and will spend for. Doesn't mean I'm buying the woman, I'm buying the car. We have a fan question, right? Yes, we do, and it's our first one so far for this show. It's about something that was a huge controversy this week. Take a listen. Okay, guys, the season of The Bachelor was one of the most ridiculous ever. Ari proposed to one girl, and then he dumped her and popped the question to the girl that he had rejected as a runner-up the last episode. Like it or not? <laughs> <laughs> he did? Like, you didn't watch the Oscars. I don't watch The Bachelor. Yeah. That said, maybe I should watch The Bachelor, because that's the most concocted nonsense I've ever heard. Who tries to get engaged to two different people on a reality show that's not real? I don't know. I think that happens a lot nowadays. That's why everybody is pissed off about this. Marriage thing. options? Uh, yeah. That's yeah, what happens times? in society now? <laughs> One well, guy if it's not going to be you, girl. it's going to be her. <laughs> happens a lot where you stage two proposals yeah. and have a company buy you a ring. That happens frequently. No, this is like I the franchise tag. If you don't sign the tag, I'm going to move on to a different free agent and marry them. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for him. Let's see if it lasts. Hey, we're just talking about time. cars. Upgrade the model. <laughs> and kidding. that's exactly what he did. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the show in general. Real love happens off the internet. Does it? I would hope so. I haven't so. found it yet, but well, we love you guys. For Britt McHenry, she'll find it. Guy Lambert, I'm Brad Weinstein. See you next week.